this is our goldfish report number 471 this is our political theater series with the most dangerous mind in america my friend jim fetzer how are you today jim louise i'm utterly dismayed trump yesterday basically threw in the towel said we're gonna have to go to april here with this and it's all a scam louisa i put it together we've got all the proof i'm going to present it this whole thing is a scam there is no coronavirus epidemic you cannot have a pandemic without deaths at an abnormal rate that's really what a pandemic is all about well only domagard whom i regard as the greatest expert on false flags in the world who has mastered to the extent that he can predict the next has sent me data from all the european countries all the european countries showing there's no increase in mortality there's no sign here of any increase in mortality from a pandemic this is from austria belgium denmark uh uh, Estonia, Finland, e e Germany, you go on and on. Uh, Luxembourg, Malta, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Spain, nothing, nothing, nothing. You cannot have a pandemic and not have an increase in mortality. There's no increase in mortality. Therefore, there is no pandemic. There's more. Jason Goodman, who has his own show and with whom I've had certain differences in the past, went down to Elmhurst Hospital after uh, in Queens after a uh, nurse, uh, actually a doctor at Elmhurst reported that they were short on ventilators, which when the newspaper contacted the hospital, it denied. So Jason Goodman went right down to Elmhurst Hospital and what did he find? Nothing, nothing going on. I mean, it was ridiculous. No pandemic, no signs of anything. Get this, here's another report. New source for banned YouTube. German journalist goes to hospital teeming with coronavirus patients. What does he find? No one is there. This is a complete sham. It's a, it's a mind, I hesitate to use the word. We are being played. This is the biggest psyop in American history. And get this, how much more we're, we're learning about it. Bill Gates, who has been very much behind, and I'm convinced all of this, he has for years now been giving symposia explaining how the great threat to the world is not nuclear weapons, it's a pandemic. He talks about these viral pandemics. He also promotes vaccines. We know what vaccines can do to us. Trump had been brilliantly, deftly sidestepping vaccines by discovering that there's a hydrochloroquine which will solve the problem it's solving the problem all over the place it's a pill it's an anti-malarial pill but it works against a coronavirus patients who actually had we had 80 in one hospital 70 and these were hospitalized patients they were in serious conditions they were all 80 given the hydro uh, uh, this treatment and 79 of them survived 79 of them survived so is there a pandemic? Look at this. Some in the alternative media are beginning to use the term plandemic instead of pandemic, since there's clear evidence that the events unfolding today over the coronavirus have been planned for some time, even before the breakout in Wuhan. Now get this, from the president of the Fed in St. Louis, this is the president of the Fed in St. Louis, this is a planned, organized, partial shutdown of the U.S. economy in the second quarter. The overall goal is to keep everyone, household businesses, you know, whole, whole segments of the community shut down. No business. It's a huge shock. We are trying to cope with it, keep it under control. It's deliberate. It's planned. This is from a guy who was involved. The Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis President James Bullard told, Bloomberg News recently, unemployment could reach 30%, but admits the shutdown of the U.S. economy is something that was planned. Health Impact News reported back in January 2020 how Event 201, hosted by the John Hopkins Center for Health Security in partnership with the World Economic Forum and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, ran a five-hour simulation on the coronavirus pandemic six weeks before the first outbreak in Wuhan, China. Six weeks before. 
there's now what you have to realize is the enormity of the impact on the American economy. Here is uh, a, a congressman from West Indiana, Jim Banks, among 40 Republicans who oppose the bill because there are 5.7 million companies in the U.S. 90% have less than 20 employees. 90% have less than 20 employees. And it turns out that 75% of that 90% of small business can't last a month with zero revenues, cannot last a month with zero revenues. Get this, I've been doing special reports with Dean Ryan in Los Angeles, Mike Barra in Seattle. We have done seven of these reports right from the scene. Turns out Dean Ryan has learned from an inside source that the company producing the coronavirus test has a design to guarantee false positives. No wonder Hillary is calling for more tests. She wants more tests, more false positives. She's the, here's the company, Geogenomics. Turns out they were into bankruptcy. They needed something to bail them out. This appears to have been the solution. Producing test kits for coronavirus that are guaranteed to give you a false positive. And guess what? Dr. Fushi has been running around like a chicken with his head caught off, telling us we have to shut down the whole nation's economy, is a buddy with the WHO director general, and they're both connected to the Clinton Foundation through Ethiopia. This is outrageous. Right. Director General Adam, whom Dr. Fushi stood up for, was part of the leadership of Ethiopia when millions of dollars in aid for HIV assistance went missing. It connects Dr. Fushi to the WHO Director General's actions in Ethiopia related to the Clinton Foundation, which specifically notes Dr. Tedros on their site. The Clinton Foundation was involved in millions of dollars worth of activities around the globe, including in Ethiopia. Louisa, I guarantee you, based upon my research, this is a scam. This is a complete scam. But I did have a video I wanted to share here of Dr. Fauci, which I did share on a previous report. Um, sure. Uh, because I have to tell you that it, he's a very problematic character, as you're, as you're pointing out. Fauci um, is a rat. There's no doubt he's seeking to destroy the United States economically. No doubt about it whatsoever. Right. Uh, this was a very compelling uh, video clip that I have here of another doctor who is basically outing him. So I found it. Let me screen share that for you. Right. Here we go. And the guy, uh, one of the youngest members of the National Academy of Sciences, Peter, you know, won every award uh, that NIH had to do. But when Peter said, wait a minute, there is no causal relationship between this virus, HIV, which he considered a very harmless virus, and AIDS, he was vilified. You know, all of his grants went away. And the guy that promoted this lie was Fauci's predecessor by the name of Gallo, Robert Gallo. Robert Gallo was brought up on scientific misconduct charges. He literally stole the HIV virus from France. He couldn't produce enough of the virus because they couldn't find it, okay? He created a bogus HIV test. And the result was Fauci came to his rescue. I think there was a power play, Fauci essentially became, uh, took the lead, Gala was put into the back, and that was the beginning of this guy's career. You know, he writes about how he hangs out with Bono, and you know, remember the whole AIDS and all the stupid celebrities getting involved in this nonsense, right? Oh yeah. This was a, so Fauci, he's a veteran of this. This ain't his first rodeo. He learned how to create bogus science, to promote bogus science, to create the fear of HIV causes AIDS, Billions of dollars were spent on this. A lot of people died because people use drugs like AZT. I had a very good friend of mine who died from it. And, you know, people didn't learn HIV is frankly a harmless virus. Okay? The people who were dying from it were, again, immunocompromised. Gays at that time, you know, were having 1,500 partners, were doing meth, amphetamines, all sorts of drugs. They were destroying their immune system. You had IV drug users who were destroying their immune system, and you had people getting blood transfusions, not because of the virus in the blood, but because they would get immunosuppressive drugs. The simple point here from a scientific standpoint is when you lower and you destroy the immune system. So Fauci doesn't want to talk about that. Everything is about the boogeyman of viruses, okay? It well, is a, the biggest fraud that's taking place. Fauci knows what he's doing. He's been doing this. He is the face of pharma 
and vaccines, and he sees his opportunity to become, you know, the hero in all of this. That's it right there, Jim. Brilliant, brilliant. That's a great clip. And you notice the presence of Bill Gates and Hillary Clinton in those clips. They Absolutely. were right there. They are key players in this massive deception. Absolutely. Dr. Shiva, that was. Mm -hmm. You know, Trump's been very good up until now, but right here in the paper about this report yesterday, Trump extends notice to May. President says to prepare for 100,000 dying. Well, people die all the time, Louisa. They're not giving you the statistics on the normal rate of death. I mean, this is just a ridiculous scam. Here's what it says. Washington, bracing the nation for a death toll that could exceed 100,000 people. We had a million die from tuberculosis yeah. in 2017. No one talked about a tuberculosis pandemic. Mm -hmm. We have a million 500,000 dying every year from fungal infections. No one talks about a fungal infection. 100,000 is a drop in the bucket. You don't shut down a, a national economy because people are dying. Even if you have a contagious disease, you do not do that. What does he continue? Uh, President Donald Trump on Sunday extended restrictive social distancing guidelines through April, bowing to public health experts. These are the frauds. These are the phonies like Fushi, uh, who presented him with even more dire projections for the expanding coronavirus pandemic. It's just bull. It is total rubbish, Louisa. Let me give you more proof, mm -hmm. including a load of experts who are convinced that th we're handling this all wrong. Here, here from the Daily Mail, Trump was being heroic. It was up to the doctors. They shut the entire world, Trump said. He's ready to get the U.S. open for business in days by confining lockdowns to hot spots and refuses to commit to following missing Tony Fossey's advice on its safety. This is what he should be doing. This is the right thing. Now get this. There are 12 experts who question the coronavirus panic from all over the world. This is published on my blog. It came from Off Guardian. Let me read some of them. Dr. Sashar Bakhti is a specialist in microbiology. He was a professor at Johannes Gutenberg University in Mainz and head of the Institute for Medical Microbiology and Hygiene, one of the most cited research scientists in German history. What he says, we are afraid that 1 million infections with the new virus will lead to 30 deaths per day over the next 100 days. But we do not realize that 20, 30, 40, or 100 patients positive for normal coronavirus, this is normal, which is all over the place, are already dying every day. The government's anti-COVID-19 measures are grotesque, absurd, and very dangerous. The life expectancy of millions is being shortened. The horrifying impact on the world economy threatens the existence of countless people. The consequences on medical care are profound. Already services to patients in need are reduced. Operations canceled. One on my own hand. Practices empty. Hospital personnel dwindling. All this will impact profoundly on our whole society. All these measures are leading to self-destruction and collective suicide based on nothing but a spook. Dr. Joel Kettner, Professor of Community Science and Surgery at Manitoba University, former Chief Public Health Officer for Manitoba Province, Medical Director of the International Center for Infectious Diseases, what he says, I have never seen anything like this, anything anywhere near like this. I'm not talking about the pandemic because I've seen 30 of them, one every year. It's called influenza and other respiratory illness viruses. We don't always know what they are, but I've never seen this reaction, and I'm trying to understand why. I worry about the message to the public about the fear of coming into contact with people, being in the same space as people, shaking their hands, having meetings with people. I worry about many, many consequences related to that. In Hubei, in the province of Hubei, there has been the most cases and deaths by far. The actual number reported is one per 1,000, and the actual rate of death is one per 20,000. So maybe that helps put things into perspective. Another, John Iannotis, professor of medicine of health research policy and biomedical data science at Stanford University School of Medicine. 
and a professor of statistics at Stanford University School of Humanities and Sciences, director of the Stanford Prevention Research Center, co-director of the Meta Research Innovation Center at Stanford, also the editor-in-chief of the European Journal of Clinical Investigation, chairman of the Department of Hygiene and Epidemiology, University of Ionia School of Medicine, as well as adjunct professor at Tufts. I mean, these people are world-class experts. What he says, patients who have tested for SARS-CoV-2 are disproportionately those with severe symptoms and bad outcomes, as most health systems have limiting testing capacity. Selection bias may even worsen in the near future. In one situation where an entire population was tested, the Diamond Princess cruise ship with its quarantine passengers, the case fatality rate there was 1%. But this was a largely elderly population in which the death rate from COVID-19 is much higher than for others. Could the COVID-19 case fatality rate be that low? No, some say, point to a high rate in elderly people. However, even some so-called mild or common cold type coronaviruses that have been known for decades can have case fatality rates as high as 8% when they infect elderly people in nursing homes. If we had not known about a new virus out there, had not checked individuals with PCR tests, the number of total deaths due to influenza-like illnesses would not seem unusual this year. At most, we might have casually noted that flu this season seems to be a bit worse than average. Here's another, Dr. Peter Groshe, Professor of Clinical Research Design and Analysis at the University of Copenhagen and founder of the Cochrane Medical Collaboration. What he says, our main problem is that no one will ever get in trouble for measures that are too draconian. They will only get in trouble if they do too little. So our politicians and those working with public health do much more than they should. No such draconian measures were applied to the 2009 influenza pandemic, and they obviously cannot be applied every winter, which is all year round, as there is always winter somewhere. We cannot close down the whole world permanently. Should it turn out that the epidemic wanes before long, there will be a queue of people wanting to take credit for this, and we can be damn sure draconian measures will be applied again next time. But remember the joke about tigers? Why do you blow your horn to keep the tigers away? But there are no tigers here. Yeah, you see what a great job I'm doing? Meanwhile, the physician, the expert on, on epidemiology, Neil Ferguson from the UK, whose report and projections of 2.2 million Americans and more than a half a million Brits dying from the pandemic has reversed himself. After tens of thousands of restaurants, bars, and businesses closed, Ferguson is now retracting his model, saying he feels reasonably confident our healthcare system can cope when the predicted peak of the epidemic arrives in a few weeks. Testifying before the UK's, UK's Parliamentary Select Committee on Science and Technology, he, said, he now predicts UK deaths from the disease will not exceed 20,000 and could be much lower. So he's gone from 500,000 in the UK to 20,000, and think of that proportionally from 2.2 million for the United States. Louisa, right. I mean, I'm telling you, the evidence is overwhelming. This is a complete scam. Well, Jim, on the back of a, of a Lysol can, it does say it kills coronavirus, so you're right. Um, but there's, so, so right now, there's also, uh, there's also a tweet that I wanted to share with everybody uh, that this is being censored on Twitter right now. Um, and this is the treatment for this virus uh, by Dr. Doug uh, uh, DeBella. And his, uh, he says his outpatient treatment regimen is hydrochloroquine, 200 milligrams twice a day for five days, azithromycin, 500 milligrams once a day for five days, just like what the president said in his news conference, basically telling, you know, Fauci to shove it. Um, zinc sulfate, 220 milligrams daily. We treated 500 patients in New York with above regimen, zero deaths, zero hospitalizations. <laughs> Hello. This is being censored on social media, on Twitter right now. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Now, Right. Remember, our social media is dominated by Zionist forces. Remember, I yeah. have a panel 
of 100 executives from CNN, every one of whom is a dual U.S.-Israeli citizen. Yeah. Yeah. I have another panel from NBC, 100 executives. Everyone is a dual U.S.-Israeli citizen. I have another panel from the New York Times, 100 yeah. executives, every one of whom Amazing. is a dual U.S.-Israeli <laughs> citizen. Amazing. We are getting complete bull, hey, nonsense, Jim. rubbish from the media. They are hey, reinforcing hysteria in the country, and the fate of the nation hangs in the balance.